Hey guys, how the hell are you? Welcome back to Arnold Drinks. My name is Arnold, and tonight, I drink. So tonight, I finally get to dive into something that's been on my shelf for a while. You guys know that I have uh, visited Crowded Barrel in South Austin before. I have done a review on the Single Mom, the Malt of Magnificence. That was on a mini bottle Monday. And I've also done a review of the Errant Barrel, which I love, love, love. That is honestly... One of the best whiskeys on my shelf, if you ask me. And now I finally get to also dive into this. This is Eleanor, but this is the weeded Eleanor, meaning that it has a mash bill of, I want to say it's 45% wheat. Yeah, 45% wheat in the mash bill, but it is still a bourbon with 51% corn in there. The rest is made up by malted barley. This is from Crowded Barrel in South Austin, home to the Whiskey Tribe and Whiskey Vault guys. This is super transparent. Right on the back of the bottle, it says that they source two-year weeded bourbon from MGP in Indiana. It says what the mash bill is, and then it says that they sample the barrels from time to time, and then at some point they choose what to blend together. This is basically a two-year bourbon on the side sticker here it says that it is 118 proof meaning it is 59 percent abv it does list an age statement of 39 months now my question would be is it 39 months in addition to the two-year age statement that mgp provided or is it just 39 months including that so i don't know We'll call it a minimum of three years and a maximum of five years, but a little bit ambiguous in there. This is batch number four for those that may be concerned about that. Let's just dive in. Let's just see if this stacks up. I bought this a long time ago. I've had this a handful of times. In my opinion, it's been getting a little bit better every time I crack open the bottle, but let's do a legit review and go into it. So big alcohol on the aroma, not like an ethanol hint, like a paint thinner kind of note like Weller Special Reserve gave me all those many moons ago, but carrying with it a citrusy note. Carrying with it a little bit of caramel, a little bit of orange zest, and a little bit of that alcohol tickle, Jesus. The more I dive in, the more complex the orange zest note gets. It gets a little bit more tangerine-y the more I sniff it. Let's just go in for a taste. Let's see what we're working with. Very, very nice. Has kind of the characteristics I get out of a lot of weeded whiskeys with that kind of big sweetened cherry note, a bit of honey sweetness that's in there. The big note that I'm still getting from the aroma, it's carrying over. I'm getting a lot of citrus in there, a lot more potent on the palate. It's a lot more zesty. It's definitely something that the proofage is making a lot more prominent. So very, very big citrus from this whiskey. I'm quite digging that. Let's go in for another sip. I swear I've had this bottle for months now and I feel like it's gotten better and better and better and even easier sipping. It's definitely not an everyday sipper at close to 120 proof, but it's definitely something where if you've got some friends over and you want to like impress them with something that no one else has but is incredible, this might be a good bottle to whip out. It's just big robust uh, citrus notes. That it, It's weird to pair that term, robust, with citrus notes, but that's what we got going on here. You've got the vanilla, you've got the caramel note that you would typically get out of a bourbon, but you've got a bit of a cherry sweetness in there, but you really have big and bold citrus notes kind of carrying through everything. 
A little bit of a cinnamon note just hit me right now on the finish, but it's not super oaky cinnamon. It's not super peppery. It's just like kind of a sweetened, slightly baking spicy kind of cinnamon. It's rather nice, but yeah, the citrus is definitely still the biggest note. Let's go in one more time. It's interesting to me that that is still the most prominent note with there being no rye in the mash bill. There's just a huge citrus kick that's in there. Let me drop in a few droplets of water just to see if anything changes. Okay, just dropping in about five drops into what's remaining in the glass. Gonna shake it around a little bit, see what happens there. So the ethanol note is definitely subdued on the aroma now, as is actually the orange zest. I hope I didn't just ruin this. It's funny, add water to it and it almost makes it a little bit more of an astringent affair. Definitely still getting a lot of cinnamon on the back end, still definitely getting big and bold orange zesty notes coming through there. Any sort of graininess that was present is definitely a lot more subdued, getting a little bit of a soft oak note that's trying to creep out and the vanilla is now a bit more prominent than the caramel which was the inverse before I added the drops of water. So, you know, now that I think about it, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a melon note coming through now with adding some water to it. Kind of like how in a lot of my favorite scotches, there's a cantaloupe note. There's something in here now after adding a few drops of water that's trying to creep out. Still incredibly enjoyable, but in my opinion, yeah, I kind of ruined it a little bit by adding those five drops of water. I should have just left it alone because at the cask strength, barrel proof, full proof, the 118 proof, this thing is kind of really, really awesome. So thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and as always, remember, Take what you do seriously, but do not take yourselves too seriously.